it's a windy day down here at the Fort Fisher State Park so I'm basically gonna probably have to narrate this because of the wind noise I'm here to do a test drive on my magic cycle at tar bike I want to see how it performs on sand before I fully rig it out with rods and things like that for fishing. Now this should be a pretty challenging test because I expect for sure to encounter soft sand, hard pack, and hopefully some mushy sand as well. Well, let me get my helmet on because I'm sure I might take a spill or two. And let's get out there and run around and I'll narrate it from here on in. Well, I'm at the entrance to the four-wheel drive section. You can see it right there behind me. Took a little run around the roads just to kind of get used to the bike a little bit more. I've been riding it in my neighborhood, but you know, that's not enough to get used to all the gears, the speed levels and things like that. One thing I discovered is I've got my crate set too far forward and it hits the back of my backside on the seat. So I'm gonna move that back a little bit. And then let's get into the sand. <clears throat> okay, this is the entrance after you get through the gate. The sand is pretty hard packed right here, so I did not really experience a challenge. But then you get out to, into the long, probably a half mile straightaway to get down to the feature that I call the sand trap. It's a hard left turn right here where you always see vehicles stuck. You can see all the loose sand on the left and right. This is a challenging, challenging piece of beach to negotiate, even in a four wheel drive truck. I always stay to the far right where the sand is a little bit firmer. Now I'm out of the sand trap and you can see I'm driving across some very, very deep ruts. I was able to negotiate these successfully by fiddling with a little bit of throttle and a little bit of pedal. And eventually I got out onto less soft sand right here, and then I could glide down the hill to get to the hard pack on the beach. Once I got down on the hard pack, I wanted to put the bike through its paces. I went down the hard pack, no problem there. I went up and down hills. I found some soft mushy, mushy sand, and there was no issue with that either. Again, it's all a matter of getting used to the bike. Now, I was dealing with 20 mile an hour winds with 30 mile an hour gusts, and that made some of this a little bit problematic. But as you can see from the accelerated footage here, so I don't waste your time, the bike dealt with everything just fine, and I felt stable and safe the entire time I was doing this. Down here at the Fort Fisher boat launch, here's where you launch kayaks right here. There's some guys out here trying to get up. They're doing a better job of it over here to my left. Here's the boat launch. A lot of people have good duck fishing along that rock that runs all the way across. That's Zeke's Island way out there. I like going around that and coming in from the other side. Let's get on some smaller trails here. This one has about an inch of loose sand and it leads out to that rock feature that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna go down here, make a right, and then go up a steep hill that has about, oh, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches worth of loose sand and it's fairly steep. No problem running up this, even bouncing over a couple rocks. While we're here, let me show you a quick view of the Cape Fear River. This is looking west from Fort Fisher, and it starts over here on the right where the ferry launch is. Let's take a minute. I'll do a quick pan around the Vista. You can see a container ship in the distance. Wilmington has a port that will handle container ships. After we take a look at this, let's head back down the trail and back to the parking lot. Well, let's get out of the wind here and collect my thoughts. Before I forget, you know, I am an old guy. So coming out, it was really tough sand to try and get acquainted with the bike in. 
it was soft, shifting, moving all over the place. And you could see from the way my bike was shifting that I was having a little bit of trouble controlling it. And then I discovered that what I needed to do is instead of just relying on the passenger assist, but I needed to put just a little bit of throttle on it in addition to the pedaling and that stabilized the bike and helped me move through that soft sand a little bit easier. I did appreciate the motor on this thing because I felt like I was getting bogged down in a few places and I was able to just kind of ease up on the throttle to move myself out of that sand. You know, one of the worst things you can do when driving on sand is continue to add throttle when you're stopped. That just digs you in. And once you're dug in in a vehicle, well, it's a different challenge to get out and there's things that you can do to, to help with that. But with the bike, you don't really have that problem because if you do stop, you can always just get off and push it up and use the uh, walk assist with this if that's going to help. Okay, so I got through the sand trap that I pointed out earlier, and then I had to go crossways to get down to the water. And you saw those big dips that were created by all the vehicles, and I felt like going slow, a little bit of throttle, and pedal assist in <clears throat> what's for me three, I looked that up, I think that's 40%, got me down there very easily. Once I got onto the pad, between the water and the soft sand, it was a lot easier, of course. Although I did notice that my fat tires were sinking in and I would have never been able to ride my regular two inch wide tire mountain bike on that particular sand. I felt like I could go and pedal assist three in most cases. Once I hit some punky soft sand, I could flip into pedal assist four and that would get me through that. You saw that I had no problem going up and down hills with the fat tires on this bike and the uh, power that this motor gave me. On the asphalt road that I just finished riding on to get to this spot, boy, no problems, just cruising right along. It was great. In terms of the milk crate where I'm gonna have my fishing stuff, uh, back a little bit like it is right here is fine. I think I am going to have to go ahead and zip tie this down because the built-in strap that came with the bike, as long as, he, as well as these 24 inch bungees, aren't going to cut it when there's some weight back here in the back with my heavy fishing rods. So what power assist did I end up using? I think I was mostly between two and three when I was out there on the sand. And with the great gearing system on this bike, you know, anywhere else, I've just been in two and sometimes even one, which I think I've got set to 15% to conserve power on my battery. Because the wind out here is really tremendous. In fact, that's another issue that I had to deal with. That wind will throw you off balance because it's probably going 20 miles an hour right now, but the bike was stable enough and if there's a positive to it, the weight of the bike, I think maybe that's it. Because it allowed me to not flip over in that wind. Here's a quick tip. Be sure you have something solid. I use this cutting board to put your kickstand on or you're gonna lose your bike in the sand. As I sit here at the end of the ride, the only thing I can think of to add to what I already commented on at that intermediate stop was when you're going in the deep sand, there's a very, very delicate balance between power and pedal and traction. And every different type of sand I went on had a different mix of feel. So you need to be aware that that's gonna go on and expect it. And I ended up having to feather my throttle along with the pedal assist and pedaling to maintain a smooth, consistent, and under control progression across the loose sand. Down there next to the water, where the sand was mushy, uh, well, not too mushy, but firm to mushy, there was no problem. I could just cruise right along. There was no issue. It's only where that sand is loose that when your tire hits it, it may slide to the left or the right a little bit, 
and you're going to have to make an immediate correction. I'm happy to report I did not dump once out there. Came, came close once when I hit a real soft, soft pocket of sand. But now I know what to look for with those. It's a lot different riding a bike than being in my four-wheel drive truck, you know, heading out there on the sand. So, thumbs up to Magic Cycle for making a bike that'll take me fishing. What are your comments? Throw them down below.